Hi everybody, welcome back to HiBite. My name is Tom and this is Zero to Pipeline, the course where we get you up and off the ground with Intelligence Hub and rolling and making your own pipelines. So, in past videos, we've gone over how to install Intelligence Hub on your machine or your server. We've talked about a little once over of the UI and today we're gonna start getting into actually making some connections to your data sources uh, before in our next video, we're gonna start moving that data together in a pipeline. So, today we're gonna go over connections going to go into inputs, getting data into Intelligence Hub, and outputs, getting data back out of Intelligence Hub to your target systems. All right, so you can see here, I've already started up Intelligence Hub, and I'm at my landing page. I've just gone to my local IP address because I'm running this on this machine. I'm going to go ahead and log in with my standard, and you can see my trial is already underway. Here is a connection we made last time. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this because we're going to make it again. So I'll select it there, come up here, and delete. Perfect. All right, so what we ultimately want to do in this course is make pipelines. We want to move our data from source A to destination B, and we want to do some contextualization, some transformation therein. Now, what we need to do first is set up those connections to our sources and our destinations. We're going to do that here in the connections menu. You can see I've got a few different menus over here different modules I can navigate into and I'm going to go into connections and you should immediately see an empty list, right? So we haven't made any yet. So we're going to start with two very simple connections that we can make are MQTT and SQL. The reason those are the simplest is because Highbyte Intelligence Hub already comes bundled with an MQTT broker automatically and it already comes bundled with SQLite underlying so we can use SQLite as our SQL database. We take a look down here in the settings, you can see, if I scroll to the bottom, here's my information about my MQTT broker, and then SQLite is inherent. So, go back to connections, make a new connection, and I'm going to call this one internal MQTT. I could fill in a description here, demo for zero to pipeline. And I can organize it in a folder structure and add tags to it if I care to. I'm not going to do that right now. So I'll go next. And now I've started my connection and I'm going to pick a protocol. So I'll go into here. I know I'm looking for MQTT. I could search for it and you can see it pops up right here. Or I could scroll down through this list. These are all the connection protocols that we cover. And I can grab MQTT right there. Let's keep scrolling for a moment just so we can see what some of our options are. Got a pretty long list and it's always growing. So grab MQTT. We saw when I opened up my settings, open that another tab and log in down at the bottom. I have MQTT hosted on port 1885. We do this by default. So if you're installing this on a server with another MQTT broker, which is default 1883, you're not going to conflict with it. I'm going to go ahead and just type this IP address in here again. I could also do localhost. Localhost. Perfect. MQTG also gives me the opportunity to connect with the client ID, a username, and password. That's not a feature I'm going to leverage right now. We're just going to connect as an anonymous user. So great. And there we go. I am connected to this server. Now, I haven't sent any information into it, and I haven't sent any information out of it, or pulled any information out of it. So right now, Intelligence Hub is not 100% confident if this is correctly configured. So we're just going to say not connected until it's proven. Don't let this worry you. Uh, once we've moved data in, once we've made an active connection, this will be fine. Because we haven't given it a topic yet. What we need to do is go into our other inputs and outputs and give more details about data we're trying to take in to Intelligence Hub or data we're trying to put out to Intelligence Hub and where. So I'm going to go into my inputs here. Well, actually, I'll start with the outputs. I'm going to make a new output. I'm just going to call it MQTT out. And this is the topic. If you're familiar with MQTT, you know everything lives in a topic. Uh, and that's sort of like a path under which data is stored. I'm just going to call demo slash my topic. There we go. I've got some QoS options here. There's all kinds of options we can configure. If you want to know more about each of these options, you can go up here to the user guide and take a look in the configuration connect 
connections. And any one of these will be able to tell you what we're looking for for a connection. So let's head back to my output. There we go. I can create this and I can write an expression now. Uh, one of the cool things about Intelligent Sub is we've got these little test write and test read uh, boxes here on the right hand side. So we can use this to write something directly. Uh, so if we're going to write an object, which we want to do in, well, no, let's just, let's just do a string for now. Hello world. I can save and write. There we go. Success. Uh, now, really, there'd be a great way for me to demo that. Don't we want to see what's going on in this topic? We sure do. If you take a look down here on the tools on the UNS client, I'm going to open that up in another tab as well. And this is going to be be our MQTT browser. So here we can actually visualize everything that goes on in MQTT. And you can see I've already configured a connection, so it already knows which one I want to connect to. If I had multiple MQTT topics here, I could, or excuse me, MQTT connections configured here, I could pick one here. But we'll go ahead. This hash just means we're going to subscribe to everything and we're going to connect. Now there's nothing here right now because since my browser client has connected, nothing has been written. So I'll go back to my output and I'll write that output again. And you can see here, demo, my topic, and now we have hello world. Isn't that great? Let's go back to our connection now that we've written something interesting and let's configure an input. So let's get a new input. Let's keep things simple still. We'll call this MQTT in. And there's more things that I can configure here. The topic, I'm gonna do demo slash my topic again, topic again. I'm going to create that, save. And if I test this input, I'm not actually going to get much because again, since this client has been created, this connection has been created, uh, nothing has been written here. So in fact, I'm going to go back to my overview. One of these things you can see is I'm opening up a lot of tabs. Intelligence Hub is totally fine with you opening tabs to different portions. You'll have to log into each tab, but once you're in, you'll be able to uh, manipulate all of them at your leisure. So this is my in. You can see we have no, no value there. Let's go to my output. Let's write this again. Hello again. Write output. Success. You can see my client. Success, hello again. And now if I read this, I get hello again in my input. These test reads, test writes, are a great way to check if your connection is actually running. And now let's go back to the overview. You can see here, now the status looks just fine at the overview of my connection. We can do a similar thing with SQLite. So let's go back to our connections. Let's make a new connection. And let's call this SQL, well, it'll be a little consistent here. SQLite, Inter internal SQLite, perfect. SQLite, excuse me, for demo purposes. Purposes. All right, maybe this time I'm gonna group this as SQL. Next. What kind of connection are we making? We're going to search for SQL. One thing I want to point out is when we connect to SQLite, it's just going to ask us straight away what the database is, not the host. We can connect to other SQLite databases, but when we select the SQLite connection, it's just going to assume that we're talking about the internal one. If we wanted to connect to a SQLite database, database elsewhere, we could use the JDBC driver and connect to that no problem. I'm going to keep things simple here because a lot of times we use SQLite for a little interim data stores. I'm going to grab that guy and I'm going to call this my base. One little trick here, this is going to write to disk. If I wrote in here memory, whoop, memory, then this is just going to save this table in memory and I can access it all the same, but it's going to be stored in RAM. So when I turn the computer off, when power cycles happen, anything like that, it's going to be obliterated. Maybe you want to use this if you are interested in something transient. If you're just goofing around and testing things out, you don't want to write out any files, that's totally fine. Be aware of how much memory you're going to write to. Otherwise, have fun with this. I'm going to go ahead 
and just call it my base because this way I'll be able to use another third party tool to uh, interact with it through SQL if I wanted to. So there we go. Create my base. Perfect. Let's do the same thing. Let's write an output. New output. See here I'm at my, this is my overview. This is all the connection information. And then I went to this output tab. I'm going to make a new output. Uh, this name is pretty decorative, basically. Um, let's see. My, well, I'll call it SQLite out. Perfect. And the table in that base, I'm going to keep things real inspired and call it my table. Now, here are some options on how we're going to handle interacting with this table. Our write type is going to be insert, update, or upsert. These are like, do we want to only add new lines, only update existing lines, or do both? Uh, if we check update or upsert, you're going to say, it's like, all right, well, what am I checking against if I'm, what's the, essentially the key of this table, right? So what am I checking against in order to know if this line is going to be added or updated? Here, you're essentially going to fill in um, the where portion, you know, select X from table where, and you fill that where portion in here. Keep things simple. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as just insert. This is uh, strictly to say only add these lines. Same thing going on down here. Create table. Do I want it off or we're not going to create the table? We're going to create the table and update it or create the table but not update it or create and update. Go ahead and create an update. All right. Create. Now here I can write again. And I'm going to do this is as a JSON and I can do this simply as like key one value no let's just do 123 um, and then key two hello all right so we'll save that write our output success that's great if this hadn't worked we would get some error here in the results. But that did work, that's great news. Let's go back to our, I'm gonna close some tabs here that I don't need. I don't need that MQTT connection. I don't really need the client browser anymore. That's okay. Let's close that. And then let's go back to our overview so we can see our connection and our inputs. So now we want a new input. And I'm going to use this to read back the same thing that I just wrote out. So we'll call a SQLite, SQLite in query. And now in the query, I'm going to write essentially my SQL query. So this is going to be executed every time this connection is used. Uh, here I'm going to write, just keep it real simple, like star from my table. Semicolon. Always, always forget that. All right, create, let's test that input. And there you go, we can see there is that key one, 123, and key two, hello, that I sent to that SQLite table. We've also got a couple other things. You can see when Intelligence Hub writes out, it often adds these extra little bits. Uh, this ID is added as a column to, the, to any SQL table. Uh, this timestamp is basically included in any write. These things with these little, um, underscores proceeding they're looking like private variables these are added for convenience you can ignore them when you need to or filter them out later if we have to so there we go you can see i'm getting back an array of that entire table it's really just one line that i wrote to and that object right there includes the data that i wrote to it so yeah that's a quick overview really you can get into a lot of weeds here uh, we can go look at all the do one more look at all of our and you can see when I added that file I get a little organization now with my connections but if I were to make another new connection each one of these connection protocols has their own nuances for inputs and outputs but each one of them is going to get you data into Intelligence Hub or out from Intelligence Hub so I would take a look at any of these if you have questions about any of them Certainly go ahead up here to the user guide and you can start to get some information about each one. Let's say if we just want to know what is the CSV connection does. This is supporting 
reading and writing CSV files. Great, so we can pull data in from CSVs. It's another thing we could show pretty easily. So there you go. I hope this gets you started looking through the connections browser. Remember, you're gonna make a connection first, and then you're gonna make inputs and outputs to that connection. That's gonna get you data into Intelligence Hub and out from Intelligence Hub. We now, in our next video, we're gonna take that data, plug it into a pipeline, and use it in order to populate some sample data and read it back in, do some manipulations on it. Hope to see you there. Hope you had fun. See you next time.